Previously on the Jay and Dan podcast. Mm -hmm. You're having chocolate for breakfast. You're having steak for soup. And I don't know if anyone's having steak for soup. Mm -hmm. Can I get a soup? Sir, that's a steak. You put an entire porterhouse in a bowl and served it to me. Mm -hmm. So you got Ronald McDonald. You got him. Officer Big Mac. I've never heard of him. Captain Crook. I feel like those are... Mm-hmm. Grimace's initial manifestation was quite different from the sweet, child-friendly dullard he grew up. Well, I didn't <laughs> fight dullard. dullard. Mm-hmm. The Hamburglar. Mm-hmm. Initially called the Lone Jogger. I didn't realize there were all these backstories. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Stop. Did I? Did we talk about this on Rubber Boots Pod? You today? have to yell at the guy. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Danny asked me, please, to touch his soggy knees. Mm-hmm. I'm snacking it. You're listening to the Jay and Dan Podcast. Listen to these young boys. <laughs> Dance. Dance. Oh, I sounded so good this week. Yeah, it's... Or uh, maybe I'm sounding great. <laughs> a sickness is going around yeah, the Jay and Dan offices. You're doing well. Producer Tim just left. We were on our way over here to do the podcast. He's like, I'm out of here. And that is unprecedented. Usually he's coughing and hacking over everybody. And I'm like, Tim, for f**k's sakes, go home. Yeah. And he he never does. And tonight he did because he had a a big bottle of Buckley's. And he showed, he's chugged like three quarters of that. I don't think he should be getting behind the wheel, to be perfectly (laughs) honest. He's driving to Brampton. Yeah, I'm on cold meds. Cold meds do something strange to you. He's driving across the city. We have a very special guest in studio with us as we speak. It's our old pal, Jeremy. Hi, Taylor. guys. How's it going? Jeremy. Jeremy. Keep your Come distance. On, it'll be fun. I'm not sick at all. I don't yeah. get sick anymore. But s- Ever? No. Even I haven't been sick in years. I haven't been sick in years either. That's why it's so <laughs> strange. And these cold medications, there's something in them because you've got to fold out the label. Like, there's serious sh- in here. Well, there has to be something in it yeah, to it's make like you feel it's better. Yeah, it's like speed, basically. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. It's speed during speed. the day, and then it's the drowsy whatnot during the nighttime. So we've discussed this. Yeah, Xanax exactly. at night. I can't you're, do you're the... You're rocking uh, lean <laughs> all day, yeah. and then at night you're hitting, you're going to you're, the gin and juice, night or whatever night. they call that. But I can't <laughs> do the nighttime ones because I get the old Jimmy legs. The Jimmy legs? Oh, my legs are like running a marathon on that stuff. So you... So what are you taking? Nothing. Oh, you're just... I thought you're all hopped up on meds. No, no, no. The, for the daytime, yeah. I'm oh, on the, the speed. daytime. I'm on the oh, daytime you're on the speed. daytime. Yeah, the nighttime <laughs> stuff. Yeah. You get itchy legs. <laughs> no, no. I, no, I do. Like, I, like if oh. I ever take the NyQuil, I'm like... I, There's I'm, something going on in your I, legs. I start getting uh, irritated all around my whole body. <laughs> really? Yeah, my but, legs especially. That's it. I, that's what you have to What do you call them? No, no, no. Jimmy this legs. Is Jimmy legs. No, no, this is different. Jimmy legs is like if your legs are like, imagine, you know, when the doctor would check your reflexes and your legs would go okay, like Okay, well, that. I get the Gino Retta legs. <laughs> yeah. No, where I just feel just like, you, you know, itch. fired up. You want to itch. Yeah, well, I want to just get things going like draft day. Styles. So would this be classified as a flu? Because I keep waking up in a puddle. Like it's like someone yeah. put me in a yeah. bathtub and placed me back why, in the bed. Why are you here? I'm fine. No, you're until not. Until I sleep. <laughs> you're not fine. You look like third stage <laughs> yeah, Ebenezer. Like you've seen already two ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> the third one's coming. <laughs> you're still at work. You're still in denial. Yeah, the third ghost will come and then he'll be like, I, I'm going and then home. he'll be dead. <laughs> It'll be too late. He'll die. <laughs> All well, that Buckley's won't help you then. Man, I'm just going to go wash everything. Oh, God. Get, get home and just scrub down. I'm going to be a, so, like Naomi Campbell in the airline seat with the wipe it, the wipes. <laughs> that's Have right. you seen her get into it? <laughs> no, no. She wipes every surface down. Oh, yeah. Well, that's she like, goes through like three boxes, do that. A lot though. of people do that. I can yeah. see that. But it's like you that. have a garbage bag full of wipes. Nice. And then you put that in that old air, airplane two? toilet or whatever it is. Well, I was waiting for Onright to send me a text saying, hey, I'm calling in sick. And but I this gonna, is the thing. I was going to follow his lead. I sound terrible, but I'm you're not sick. You're I feel fine. great. Yeah. yeah. I, I've lost my voice. It's gone. And apparently it's an allergy thing, uh, according to Spring, our makeup artist. She says this happens to her. Because I had an allergic reaction over the weekend to some Thai food. 
And the next morning I woke up you and I have talk. no voice. So I it's like no a voice. tie so spice. Has it gotten better or is it still the same? I felt like earlier today it was better, but now I'm talking too much. And oh, it's getting worse. Yeah, no. So, right. So it's Bob Seeger still the same. Very right Bob Seeger. Still the same. So you're not a Thai guy. I no. love Thai food. I just ate something that didn't agree with me. But okay. Did you get the uh, poop poops? But here's my question. We're why are you here? Upstairs, why, why would you wait for me to call in sick? Why wouldn't you just call in sick? Well, he's thinking it's a team effort. That's right. No, but I call, remember I called in Maybe, sick a couple no, of weeks ago. I know. And it was great. Oh, so you're so saying great. you're kind of like, why didn't you throw it out there? Because then he could have jumped on yours. Well, you, you know exactly well, no, what, what I'm I did. Saying it, is, I guess it doesn't matter. I, what I'm saying you were is, coming in anyway. Well, because you're not feel really good. sick. Yeah. Right, right. So my, my point to him is when I was sick a couple of weeks ago or months ago, yeah. it was a great thing to call in. Because I was the same as Dan. We never called in Going sick hard, for years. Yeah. yeah, for years. So then all of a sudden, just one day, it came Cal to Cal Ripken over here. Absolutely. <laughs> we were f***ing. We were f***ing. The Ripken. Iron Horses. We were, uh, what's Luke his Eric. name? No, the f***. And Andrew, uh, who else did things? Who's the kid? By the way, from, no one uh, ever. The no Ducks, and now he's on the Stars. Like if you're gonna bet, Cogliano. On, I was Cogliano. If you're gonna bet on any record, the Cal Ripken record is the safest. Yeah. That's never gonna happen because there's yes. no athlete ever will work hard enough to want to play every single day. They work hard enough. Let's yeah. not like they work hard, but the play every day. Yeah. This is never going to happen. That's well, a really good point. And 162 games a year for years <laughs> yes. and years. What was it? 2,162 yeah. or something like that? Yeah. And I always remember when he stopped, he just stopped. Yeah, mm-hmm. no like kidding. one day he was just it's, like, all right, I'm done. It's like, like it wasn't like he was injured. Home from work and you're, you're <laughs> off and you start to get sick the next day. Yeah. Your, your body just shuts down. Like, yeah, you're actually. But he was still out <laughs> by all accounts. He was he could have played. But he just oh, dis- for sure. he just said he turned it off. Yeah, he, he just was it. like, "All right, <laughs> and I guess that's enough now." And it was just a random Isn't number he like, picked. Yeah, as opposed to you know Ricky Henderson, who's like still probably playing somewhere. Yeah, that's I true. Li- yes, he still was playing into <laughs> like, his fifties, wasn't he? No, right now he's probably oh, yeah. playing for like some you know? Venezuelan <laughs> baseball league. Um, <laughs> but you know why I'm here? My Catholic guilt. I would sit at home and I'm like, ah. Oh. I gotta, I gotta be there. That's I, and I have that too, but I just got over it. Maybe like Cal. Well, did if one if, day. if you're really holding the high numbers, then you can throw it out there once in a while because you're sick for real. Nobody yeah. wants to have the person coughing all over him all day either. Correct. Or nobody likes the okay and hero. Exactly. Like, I see you're yeah. sick. Like yeah, great really? job. You're doing yeah. awesome. Like, thanks no. for making everybody how, sick. How you feeling? I'm fine, man. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> that's and that's what I see. that's what I would say to Tim because Tim had this. And I know Tim's like a, l- a lifelong smoker too. So that darts, too. that's not helping. But yeah, he had this cough that was just like. <laughs> well, he had a ten-minute coughing fit, then he left right after that, <laughs> and then he was outside having a dart and then yeah, cough and like. <laughs> you know, the dart. If he's in the car, he's the dart and the, the Buckley's. Home. <laughs> One and then the other. One and then the other. A pull where's and the, then a buckle. Where's the dart spot here? Right back Right there. outside, outside our, our door. Yeah, it's right outside of the door. <laughs> <laughs> There's no real spot. It's just outside the door. It's getting to the point now. It's like, because people still, I think people like hack darts more socially than they do like I smoke darts all the time. Yeah, I like, don't like at a smoke. bar kind of thing. Yeah, but yeah. there, I think people that weekend bumsy styles, right? But like we can bumsy. Hey, can I bum? Is there any of the staple guys like just not going ahead and right out there? Just the dark guys, full on. But I'm up. surprised, Jeremy, how many we have a few guys on our crew that still just crush, crush it, it pretty regularly. And they're not the weekend bumsies guys. They're the full on. I go and pick up my pack of Demoriers. And you can, you, you know, can, what they love though the guys that are hacking real darts all the time. What's that? They love this whole vape scandal deal with people croaking oh, yeah, from the vape. Totally. That's and like, I told you that was sweet BS, vindication. Man. I'll crush darts till I die. Yeah, there's, they're like vegans compared to the, the vapor. Some stupid 12-year-old from Inglewood's crushing the vape for three weeks and he's out. Yeah, exactly. And I'm getting hacked. People are busting my balls for crushing a pack a day in Sudbury. Are, is there any? Sorry, Dan, I was going to say, is there anything dumber, though, than the, you know, you're like somewhere near Bay Street and you see the guy in the... Three thousand dollar Armani suit, and he's got the big vape thing. (laughs) 
It's just so stupid. There's so much it's smoke from those. So much. The undertow <laughs> canister one. Yeah, yeah it's right. like World the giant team, one. World War One <laughs> micro, like, like the one you have, like yeah. that they call their boys. Yeah, exactly. They're in the stuff. Th- they're like fellas the going down for a vape. Size. Or you're behind someone at a stoplight and you see yeah. it come out their window and you're like, do they have a fire inside no, that vehicle? Because it just doesn't end. It's just this undertow of lime mist. That's right. Strawberry flavor yeah. or whatever. <laughs> What's the big deal? It's a strawberry flavor. Actually, it's really disgusting. It's actually terrible. Yeah. And it's like, because it's yeah. like... The whole place is billowing like <laughs> Puff the Magic Dragon. Just, I mean, I appreciate them trying to stop smoking. <laughs> Our no, darts. Why, why does so much come out? I don't know. Yeah, I don't it's know. It's weird. Our it's dark like, smokers, though, you could set your watch to them. Oh, yeah. You know it's 10 minutes to showtime when there's yeah. that, when everyone's gone. No, they need to join. And it, it reminds you of the <laughs> oh. old days. Like you can imagine the producers in the control room, just a mountain of ash. And butts. Oh, yeah. You know, they're just sitting there like, ready one, take one. And they used to smoke them on air. Like I know. Just sitting, hanging with a dart. I know. Well, back then you had to, you might as well just start hacking darts. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're just getting it anyway. Exactly. You were I, just inundated. I still remember like my going with your, your friends, certain friends and their parents hacking darts in the car with the windows up. Oh, I, I see it on the highway yeah. all the time. Yeah. I'm like, imagine the smell of that vehicle. Yeah. What kind of smoking area did they have in your school? <laughs> what? Like, did, did you when have a I was smoking a... area? We had a smoking area. The smoking uh, well, area. Well, the, the first it. one I remember would be Emory at Weston and Finch. That had a solid smoking area. <laughs> right. It was probably filled with dudes and leather jackets and stuff. <laughs> Teachers and amongst them. Was there... No, they were in the staff A couple Mr. Radiches <laughs> out there. No, Mr. Radiches <laughs> in the staff room. Was there a fight a week, too, out there? Oh, yeah, definitely. Ooh, for sure. lot, of, lot of scraps. But I remember there was a kid in front of me in grade nine who had like a Metallica jacket and he always reeked like the art sound oh, break. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. They'd go out there. Ours was right by the gym. That was my favorite part. <laughs> I remember he was, this kid was so banged up all the time that he talked about hangover remedies in grade nine. Oh, what? yeah. That's, He's like, I always like to eat pizza so I don't feel so bad the next day. It's like, what? You're. But if you're like 15? Town, yeah, yeah, everyone in my town was drinking it. I know, but you just drink yeah, 13, 14. Thir- drink till 14. you can't yeah, see, and you're sure. fine, though, the next day. There's no hangover when well, you're 15. It, yeah, that's true. And it would be like they'd drink on Saturday, and then Sunday you'd recover, and you'd back to school Monday. No one showed up hungover at school at that no. point. What was the first thing you guys ever got uh, drunk on? What booze? Oh, oh, the undertow <laughs> bottle of wine. The jug. Oh, the one with the little handle? The yeah. Little, and little why, little, like, how did that in? come about? Like, how did my you cousin have... Elliot and my brother Jet. Right. Me, we've talked about Jetson. <laughs> yeah, like, hey, we have a weekend at Elliot, so we got into things. But And you, he just found, like, a bottle that... Whatever, yeah. He had or got, whatever. A, got a hold of some box wine yeah. styles, and we all crushed it. I was like, hey, I can drink this fast. It's not a big deal. Right. It's like And juice. then all of a sudden, I didn't remember anything. Yeah. And, you blacked out. Oh, yeah. And I was, like, throwing up in the hallways. and Wow. What yeah. about you, Tools? He was your uh, Webby and I, Steve Webb and I, we um, split a uh, Mickey of five star. Greasy. <laughs> yeah. Mm. That that did the trick to us. Yeah, yeah you must have been banged <laughs> up. <laughs> split a yeah. Mickey. What'd you do? Were, were you just passing it back yeah. and forth? Yeah. yeah. What'd you what? do? Just start to take your shirts off and start wrestling? We were in the back just of a pickup like, truck. Right? I don't like, know. It was, it was Peter Brown. When you're styles. a kid, that's what happens. You just start It has fighting. changed my life. <laughs> And then the first real bad one, uh, my buddy's uh, brother bought brought back these um, these huge twenty six er well twenty six twenty sixers the cheap booze from the states yeah so we all bought them for like fifteen dollars off them and it was like turpentine it was bad what was it it was just like cheap cheap. American it was just the thing that said X X X on the label. All of a sudden, much, you're, yeah. you're like, actually, X, X, X. Yeah, like I'm gonna. X. You get all mean to each other. Yes, that's what happened. Yeah. No like, way, you went all dark. Yeah, yes. <laughs> was the brown liquor? All of a sudden, tools. He's coming at him with a hockey stick. <laughs> the brown liquor will do that to you. My friend threw meatballs in my house because we had a little party and. For uh, from this day forward, we always call them meatball. Because who throws a meatball? He was banged up on the dark yeah. stuff. Right. I mean, they are nice to. They're nice projectiles. <laughs>
What was it like? Go. What was the? Was it some bottle of like <laughs> Earl's hard stuff? Like just some? Kind of, it was just no name rye. Greasy. Yeah, that's the good stuff. What was For yours? Me, it was. Um, I remember it was like grade. I want to say seven or eight. And I went over to, for a sleepover at a buddy's house, uh, Dion Burry, who's not no longer with us. Oh, and no. uh, and Dion had all these cousins. Was he like Chris Farley? <laughs> the style? He was like that pretty. He no was pretty jacked. He, no, no. He, okay, you know what he did? Unfair. You know what happened to Dion? He went and lived in Australia, and then I think he went and lived in the outback. And <laughs> what? I think I just <laughs> don't think they found him. You know? Are you or, serious? Yeah, yeah. I think he just <laughs> disappeared, or maybe they found him and he had been decomposed out oh there. Oh my god! Okay, that it was dark. Story that went. is dark. But then decades before, I was at a sleepover at his house and I got bombed on root beer schnapps. Root? Oh my goodness, that's pure sugar. Was he like, let's go out into the woods and walk around? No, no, it was, there was all these girls over there because he had uh, all these cousins and uh, it was great, actually. It started out great. Like, it started out as like, root beer, this is root beer, f- this is great. We were all feeling buzzed. Root and then it hit me, root beer schnapps. And then I... Puked everywhere, yeah. constantly. Have you, have you ever had night. it since? I have not had root beer schnapps since. And not only that, I haven't. I didn't have root beer for years after that. I love root beer. <laughs> but I couldn't have it, or it would bring back the memory. I've never even heard of root yeah, beer like schnapps. Yeah, like peach schnapps. I've heard of that. Like they have the flavor it's, schnapps. It's, oh. it's sweet. So low rent. The peach schnapps <laughs> is the stuff you see it on the top level of every bar, and it's, it's never always been there. touched. It's always been yeah. A lot of dust but, on it. A lot of dust with the creme de menthe. Oh, <laughs> and, yeah, those are just things that you... My mom around. requested that. We went out for dinner like two months ago. She requested creme de meth, and they were like, what? They were like confused. They're like, someone actually ordered it. Yeah. <laughs> they had to I dust got... the bottle off. They're like, what? Just okay. over ice? Like, what? like for, as a, like a after dinner hmm. little sipper. Hmm. Little digestive. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah, behind that. I like a ni- nice digestive. <laughs> So I spoke to Tim. Tim Oxford. Tim Oxford. Yeah. And uh, he's he's uh, on vacation in Florida, but be happy to uh, chat. Oh, maybe yeah, we should bring him. Uh, uh, maybe well, we should call him up. Well, let's Give dive into the main reason that Jeremy's here. First, we just love having you. Yeah. But also the passing of a Canadian rock icon. Yeah, Neil Peart. Um, I, uh, I'm i still shocked, to be honest. Um I, I don't know uh, how to process it because he was kind of very youthful and such a, a strong-minded person that whenever you hear, you know, you, know, you heard very much like Gore Downey in terms of he was uh, just caused, you know, everybody to listen. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that they called him the professor for a reason just because he wasn't one to uh, to, you know, look for acclamation or you know yeah extremely private yeah he didn't care about that he just wanted to do what he did and and if you like it great if not doesn't matter but everyone not only liked it like considered him technically absolutely right yeah so to be that good i mean it uh he like he never did uh meet and greets it was just alex and getty that did it right i I don't think he could deal with and and i mean rightly so because I can imagine Rush fans would just probably drive him oh, yeah. nuts with questions and, right. and nonstop. So I can see why he was kind of private and just was like, listen, uh, I mean, look at his drum set, the, how big it was. It's, you could, couldn't see him back there. It, you know, when, there's, when, a, there's an element of like, this is how I like it. You right, know, I right. Like yeah. This is a shield from yeah. the world kind of I, thing. I, you know, at one point he had to be lifted into it from the top. <laughs> That's crazy. And it was like he's gone. And then yeah. you just hear this massive sound yeah. just kind of start coming. The setup from... on that set must be take hours. Yeah. I think his tech said they, it took forever. And I know that uh, they would travel with it mostly in one right. piece on a right. truck or a couple pieces. So it wasn't like having to put it all together. Because right. I imagine it would probably take as long as the stage yeah. because of all the stuff going on there. And then he... In, in addition to being like this virtuoso behind the skins, he was also the lyricist of the 
fucking band. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is crazy when yeah. you think about it. And kind of a solitary dude. He liked to ride his motorcycle behind or ahead of the group and didn't like to really tour. Right. You know? um, probably would have been happy to, to not tour anymore for a long time ago, in a sense, just the way he was with his well, life. Well, he kind of did. Here, to yeah. Was take it time off. Kinda, it, he kind of... Like, they were essentially done, right? As At least as far as a touring man. Yeah. And I think they got started again, like, with the issues that happened when, with it, when he lost his daughter and his wife. Right. He, I think he was like, I'm not, I'm not doing anything. Right. And they, they, they did have a, a period before him kind of uh, starting to, to think about playing with them again. And they did. Uh, up until 2015, and that's obviously was a f- just a few months after that when he was diagnosed with brain cancer. Right. So um, it, that's the saddest part in a sense is just, you know, he, he, uh, he, he was just kind of piecing together another life for himself mm-hmm. with, with a wife and a child and, you know, 10-year-old daughter. And uh, it's just a very sad situation. Uh, I feel for him. I feel for his family, like the situation surrounding it and Getty and Alex and the crew of Rush and the fact that they're so tightly knit and together uh, as kind of a whole family for decades. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> it's a huge loss. If there's it's like hilarious. some uh, positive that comes out of things like this, these this outpouring of love from uh like really incredible musicians uh, and people in the music industry mm-hmm. who clearly admired him so much like there was so, i was actually shy. i knew there would be a lot i knew you you you'd get your dave grohls and your taylor hawkins you know going on and on yeah. about him but it was more than that like it was and it was all over the world too you know and not just musicians i think the people that if you're a rush fan First of all, you were a huge Rush fan. You weren't like a halfway Rush fan. That's you know? so true, right? Secondly, if you love Rush, you love the drums mm-hmm. in Rush. Like, I don't think anybody was like <laughs> only much. listening to it's Rush for the bass or the guitar. Yeah. Like, the drums were so unique. Were, yeah, and, and they commanded and were so appealing. And when you see them live, it just kind of, it's the engine uh, that, that's, it's just so impressive. Uh, that that uh, there's uh, you know there was tons of celebrities and just people of all walks of life like you said coming forward that that you wouldn't have normally have known are uh, huge fans of of not just Rush but him. They're they're one of the only two bands that I've ever and it was at the same event. It was at Sarstock where I saw them. I saw Rush and I saw ACDC for the first time live. Both of them blew me away. Mm-hmm. Like. I wandered in during Rush's set, and I'm like, oh, they're just playing an album, because it, it was that perfect. Yeah. yeah. Like, their sound was, I had never like heard that. a band that tight. I saw the Presto tour. Mm, yeah. Nice. And they were crushed it. And they had a I Washington. Was super was far away. And everything. Gardens. Yeah. Yeah. And I heard everything. Did they always have weird things on stage? Because at that concert, they had a washing machine and a dryer on yeah, stage. Yeah, I think this was even before. This is when they had the big bunny, big rabbit. <laughs> like he and was this into, was like the roll the bones era. Oh yeah. Remember that? <clears throat> like he was into um, fantasy novels and yeah, that kind science of science fiction. And, and science fiction, and it would come through in the lyrics for sure. And, and I think he was a Gen- Genesis fan, right? Uh, definitely a Phil Collins fan. Right. The way he played drums. Um, and if you listen to like, uh, like uh, Selling England by the Pound, or for example, that record. There's all those songs and those later. Ra- Rush records when they really went progressive, like twenty one twelve, right? In that era when they'd have movements in their songs, I mean Genesis, kind of that was their thing too, you know. And, and I think they they that progressive rock scene where it's like you don't have to have vocals, right? For multiple chord changes, yeah, but w- why not have a twenty minute opus, <laughs> right. right? You know yeah. that has three different movements. Sure, I mean Pink Floyd did it too. Um, but I think not to that technical level in right. terms of the drumming, definitely. Well, and so the bands you just referenced, like Genesis, Pink Floyd, Rush, are these bands where 
you are either all in on those yes. bands. Oh, yeah. Right? Or you're just kind of not, you don't get it. Or For something. sure. Right? Definitely. <laughs> and yeah. so that means I mean, you're listening to the whole album. Yeah. You've got headphones on. You're trying to figure out how these guys could be so, you know, how, so great musician, you know, as musicians. Yeah. I guess maybe Tom Sawyer or Limelight could creep over the line where it's like a jam yeah, that's kind of, rock. you know? Yeah, that's classic So, so rock. Rush definitely had some stuff that, that could be appealing to anybody, but yeah, the deeper stuff, you, like, you, yeah, you can't be, be hardcore like into it. going to Eddie Money on Friday and then going <laughs> to 2112 <laughs> thinking like, yeah, man. <laughs> Just gonna hang out, have some beers, meet some chicks. Yeah, they they, they weren't a band. The Rush was not a band where you went to see if there were other girls. And, and know, I remember in high well, school, people like were adamant well, that, remember, they, like that the, they despised Rush. The CNE from like 1980 to 1984 with the Rush hats. Everyone had their big yes, Rush hat. Right, right. <laughs> like big. that. That was a, a huge cultural phenomenon that was apparent there. Well, the other thing about Rush too is. Like, even when we were living in the States, like, people still, that was one of the first reference yes. points people had for Canada. And I think worldwide, I remember seeing them touring in Brazil and seeing, you know, like, the Brazilian crowds are so insane, right? And they're, the crowd is just chanting back every word, every lyric. And I'm, I'm like, these guys are worldwide. They were a worldwide band. Yeah. And they mm -hmm. were from here. They were proud to be from here. And so there's some special sense of pride, I think, that everybody took in Rush, even if you weren't necessarily a huge fan of their music. Yeah. Right. And especially a Canadian drummer. Who for was me. so regarded. For me, if for wherever you, yeah. I went, like, you had to talk about Neil Peart. Right. To, to the guy that's like, who's Neil Peart? How about the Neil Peart? You ever heard of Neil <laughs> Peart? Or in L.A. or wherever else, they want to talk about Rush. And right. they want to talk about Neil. So, um being a Canadian drummer, I had that, like, you kind of wore it as respect because it's coming up yeah. with any drummer <laughs> right. that you ever meet. Right. So if you had a Mount Rushmore of drummers, who's on it? If I had or yes. if anybody if had? Because like, he's probably, in your mind, in he's your probably mind. on the Mount Rushmore so, eh? yeah. drumming thing. Yeah, absolutely. Who I else? would say, like, him... For, for, like, the public eye and what Or just you. Like, you, were you considered the best? Was I can I, that's no 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 you're, 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 you're Sidney Crosby? <laughs> <laughs> Would you consider yourself the best? <laughs> I, no, I mean so, I I think in terms of his impact on drums, he's definitely one of the figureheads of modern drumming. Definitely, mm -hmm. um, and John Bonham and Keith Moon and Buddy Rich and you know those no Ringo Starr. Ringo, for sure. Absolutely. Right. Ringo, maybe even more than everybody, because if you have to think about the drum set as an instrument and taking that and putting it into people's homes as a, as part of right. it, you know, like the impact of like, nobody knows what the hell a drum set is. And now they love drums because they saw Ringo. He did that more than anybody, mm -hmm. you know, so he kind of kicked the door open for rock drumming in a sense so so and not not only because he did it first but because he had a great feel and his time was impeccable i was just gonna say like every <clears throat> whether you thought he was the greatest drummer you would never listen to one of their songs and think why well, this these guys aren't in time or this isn't right everything was yeah, very like precise. i feel like dancing and i don't hear any missteps going right. on so right. wait a second oh wait they played shea stadium right and they're using the pa that like yeah, so you bad. know the the announcers are using. Mm -hmm. That's what they're using for the for the music. Because yeah. there was no one that, that had ever done that before. Right. And there's no PAs and no monitors on stage. So all they have is their amp set up and Ringo back there. Yeah. And if it wasn't for Ringo back there, there would be no connectivity with the band whatsoever. Yeah. Right. Because that's all they could hear was the drums. So they would just play to him and he was leading it because it was the, it was a, l the loudest thing possible. Right. Yeah. And the crowd was 10 times louder than that. So it drowned out all their amps so they could barely just hear the drums. But if you listen to those recordings, they're locked, man. Yeah. They're killing it. Well, it's you, unbelievable. They're just playing by absolute feel and just following the drums. When you watch that final uh, rooftop concert they did, 
after they did Abbey Road and they're doing uh, Don't Let Don't Let Me Down with Billy yeah. Preston. He's amazing. Ringo's I amazing. I know. Like I yeah. go down a wormhole for that. Yeah. Him and McCartney together. Oh, like McCartney yeah. on the bass and him on the drums. It's so it's beautiful. Like and it yeah. sounds like like Dan said, it sounds like a recording and you're like, no wait, they're live. They're just playing this live right now. They yeah. do two takes. Yeah. And they're both like perfect. Yeah. It's incredible. Um I saw a quote uh, that uh, Neil Peart had today about someone said, like, how does it feel to be the greatest drummer in the world? It, this was back in 84 or something. Yeah. Like, really? Their peak, kind mm-hmm. of. And he said, I don't know, ask Stuart Copeland or something. He's yeah. Like, <laughs> like his Who's favorite. another similar uh, influence that, that, that I can see that he loved? Because, of the again, police, correct? Yeah. very syncopated and, uh, like, military kind of, not straight, but just syncopated and, and as opposed to swingy. Right. And loose, you know, those are two kind of very different styles. And Stuart Copeland, those police records are all like that. Rush records are like that, very uh, syncopated. And like U2 is another band that's very syncopated. They don't go off the. Yeah, Larry. Swings. Larry Mullen is. Oh, we can. They just don't, really. They did on pop a bit, but yeah. then they went, they didn't stop doing it. He all, Larry Mullen, I was thinking, he's always sitting straight up. Like he's his bad always, back, right? Yeah, his back is crushed. Right. He's got like the back of a 900-year-old right. man. I mean, I should be laughing. No, but it's, it's true. Does every drummer have back problems? Uh, to some extent, yeah. Because hmm. like, you're sitting at the edge of your seat in the yeah. studio for like 8 to 10 hours right. a day you have for no a support. long time. Yeah, nothing. Can't get a stand-up and drum Yeah, set. you can't sit down and sit back and up. And feel like you can play drums anymore because your legs don't have any, you know, there's no blood going down there. Uh, who's we, the ACDC drummer? He used to smoke Phil, darts. Phil right? Rudd? <laughs> yeah, he yeah. used to smoke darts. For sure. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> what do you mean? Everybody in ACDC smoked darts while they played. <laughs> it was great size. Like, like Malcolm Young. He, how does he get a new one? That dart hanging out. Look, there's Angus going across the stage, dart hanging out of his mouth. But, like, we talk about darts now, like it's a novelty. <laughs> bon kind of. Scott singing with a dart hanging out of his mouth. But, back, like, back then, like, and even going further back, like the 60s, is that like the Beatles, darts, constantly, oh, yeah. right? Everything they did. Well, now darts. you see guys doing, they think they're like the bad boy, like right. Post Malone's hacking darts all over oh, the place, right? Really? So they think, like, that's it. It's but when like, you see that, like even Chappelle, when you see Chappelle yeah, still smoking darts. so many darts, like, man, he's a smoker. It's so weird. You, you <laughs> must have just... done some shows with the headstones because Hugh Dillon used to have lit darts thrown to him from the other edge of the stage and he'd catch them in his mouth. Well, that's because he was all banged up all the time back then. He was acting like a degenerate. degenerate <laughs> he would spit felt, on the crowd. He'd spit felt on them. De- degenerates felt to reciprocate. <laughs> Hey, you flicked a butt at me last week and spit on me (laughs) at the end of your song. So I'm going to flick a dart at you. So but strange. that's why Hugh Dillon apologizes to most people he meets <laughs> oh, for something he? he might have done in the past. <laughs> he just comes in with, a, "I'm sorry." It's like, hey, man, I'm I sorry. Have we met before? Yeah, speed. we have. I'm, so, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird because now he's so straight. You know, it seems he's so straight laced, like actor he is. type. He's all got it together. But if you were that, if you were that far gone at one point in your life, I always think you for sure could get to that point again at any point. Obviously, oh, that's, yeah. what that's, that's what recovery is all couple, about, right? A couple Every hours. Day. Yeah, a couple day. hours away from rifling through a purse at Yorkdale. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But that's amazing to think about, like, rifling <laughs> through a purse at Yorkdale. <laughs> Uh, aren't you Hugh Dillon from Headstones? No, it's fine. I'm just looking through your purse here at the Cinnabon, at the Manchu Walk. <laughs> that fancy new Yorkdale's fancy now, man. What's that? Fancy 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 the way? ballet parking. That's yeah, always been the fancy. The rappers of all the malls. are hanging out there now. Like, well, there's so many popular Toronto rappers now too. Like, right. there's massive rappers. Wait, so it's like, like they're at Yorkdale? Are? They're hanging at Yorkdale. Like, well, like the Tory Lanes. There's like there's a massive culture now, and I think it's not unlike Seattle was in right. terms of hip hop in Toronto now. Like, it's incredible the amount of artists, but. Like they'll, they're all going to Yorkdale, York hanging Dale. out, and just like that's where all the good them. stores are. Well, they'll go on uh, Instagram, and then all of a sudden, there's four thousand kids rolling into the 
yeah. of Yorkdale and just, or, you know, now. Or, or maybe they're TikTok. Just, they're I was going to say they might be the TikTok Eaton stars Center. that I saw last Same week. Same thing. Yeah. Like, what the hell is going on? Like, just, It was crazy. I was there with my daughter, and all of a sudden we, we heard the scr- these gr- women, like girls screaming like it was like the Beatles were there. And then I asked one of the groups of girls, like, what's going on? They're like, it's some TikTok star. I'm like, TikTok star? Yeah. Hey, can we uh, let's get a hold of Timmy? Let's talk yeah. to Timmy. How do you make money on TikTok? Ha- I think we need you to flip him. Uh, okay. The digits or flip it to me and I'll I flip it. I can flip to him. you the digits. You flip me and I'll. Yeah. Do people make money off TikTok? Well, I guess oh, they must. Well, Is they're there advertising on it. Well, or there's something? so many people that watch what they do, they can monetize it other ways. Like here. So they send them to their Instagram you, or you something. You can't make money, I don't think, on TikTok. Okay. That's why you're allowed to. For some reason, use songs. Right. Um, like I don't get how that's a loophole. Just because you've, you know, you're you're because uh, it's they're not short because it's short or something. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't know. It seems like somebody's getting ripped off again. <laughs> <laughs> some music, many many songwriters are getting ripped off, <laughs> as they have been for a long time now. Okay, let me just get you. To, I remember because we had Tim Oxford at Hotmail.com. I told, I told this time one of the I'm moms. I'm not going to give you a cell phone. Number. I told one of the moms that actually one of the moms at my daughter's school is such a huge OLP fan. So I told her that you were going to be on tonight. She was excited. I said, "Well, can I tell you a little story about Tim Oxford's Hotmail address?" <laughs> <laughs> she tried. You got a lot of time it's while you're still, waiting to pick it's up your kid. Still candy banging. Yeah. He yeah. still gets says he still gets the odd email. <laughs> Has he got any Russian brides yet? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Oh, not not yet. Do you? Nah. I got, no. <laughs> Olga <laughs> dropped <laughs> off the face of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> Olga so did, really? Yeah, I haven't sent a few Tur- follow-ups. Turned out to responded. be a bot that was just like sending Trump tweets every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Olga, <laughs> big Trump fan. <laughs> Trumpster's at the national championship game, and he is in his glory. They gave him a standing ovation. There? I've never seen him so happy in my life. Yes, he was on the field. He is just glowing. He's loving it. <clears throat> they started chanting USA. Really? Or did they say Chick-fil-A? <laughs> was it USA or Chick-fil-A? Chick-fil-A. <laughs> They're carrying him around. He's got the thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, he's going to win again. Let's not talk about politics. I He's going to win. I, I know, but that's, you know. It's weird. Maybe maybe, uh, maybe he'll be in jail by then. Or at a, least a jail in maybe Ukraine. Maybe have the papers ready for it. A, right. ja- a jail in Moscow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Can you imagine? The, what? A jail in Moscow? No. I just want to think. I like, can't imagine that kind of toughness. Oh, God. Absolutely. Do you think you could live there in Russia? Like just I, when we were there, I thought like about just that pack a lot. It like, in could I live, live here? Yeah, like could I live here day to day with these people? No, who are so like, tough well, and intense. Well, and you could live anywhere. It's a, you'd, you'd have to like probably do some research and dial it down. Not a lot of smiles. Yeah, yeah it was very dour. It was always yeah. dour. Well, but then you guys you were in a weird them. situation, though, right? Being in Sochi because it was kind of like a fresh town that was just kind of put there and then everyone we met was from like literally from siberia like they'd come in to work (laughs) right like they there was work to be had and they were working so like that 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 office joke with the knock knock who's there kgb i'll ask the question <laughs> it's a pretty good one. It is a, it's the best knock knock. Tim, <laughs> Tim's on the line. <laughs> Tim, Tim Oxford. Yeah, how hey, are you? hey, what's going on? I, was oh. like, I thought I had a connection issue. How you doing? Hey, bud, he's on the resort, rocking it in, in Florida. Oh, how's the temp- in, How's the weather in Florida? I'm embarrassed to admit what I'm doing right now, but I'm sitting at the pool, and it's obviously the evening. I'm having a great time. It's warm. It's like they hit seasonably highs today. It's like beautiful. What are you guys doing? What? Why would you be embarrassed to admit that, Tim? You deserve that. Yeah. Well, that's nice of you to say. I think uh, anyone, if anyone saw me right now, I'd be embarrassed. You know. <laughs> are you nude, Tim? <laughs> are you naked? Life. Are you at a naked right. resort? Not yet. <laughs> are, are you at hedonism three, Tim? <laughs> no. I'm about to be uh, skinny dipping in this thing like you have no idea. Oh, he's, got, boy. he's getting the painted on. He's got. <laughs> It's got a, the Jimmy Buffett paint, the ripping and the tearing. <laughs> uh, what's going on? How's it going back in Canada? What are you guys? Uh, what are you doing? 
Well, it's uh, it's chillier here, Tim, than I think it would necessarily be. These guys there. are both sick as dogs, as you can hear from Jay's voice. He's a little rattled. I like to call yeah. it my radio Well, he's not voice. sick. He's not sick. He just sounds sick. And, j- and Dan's actually sick. <laughs> as he just coughed. I've just got the sweats. <laughs> <laughs> Another day at the office, eh, fell. <laughs> yeah, like, right. yeah exactly. it's, Oh, it's it's beautiful here. They, they actually had like a like unseasonably high. It's like it, what was the weather, Gav? It was like eighty something today. He has a yeah, weather guy. Yeah, eighty. Like it's Hear beautiful that? here. He's yeah, I'm just throwing to the weather the guy. Weather. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, who's the weather guy with you? I love that, eh, Gav? That's, that's, that's a Gavin Fairgrieve right there. <laughs> right on, <laughs> Tim. We like mortified that I'm saying that. It's all right. <laughs> He's like, leave me out of this. He's, He's like, like oh! at the pool all day. <laughs> I don't want any part of that. Are you with the fam, Tim, or is this a boys' trip? Or it, I was with the fam. Uh, they had headed back yesterday, or sorry, today. So I have two more days. Oh uh, boy! And yeah. now Daddy's gonna have fun. <laughs> the agreement was: I know you want to go to Florida to golf, so just keep it to the end of the trip, and then I'll head home, and you can do that. So tomorrow, okay. very accommodating. Tomorrow you're gonna you're gonna burn through thirty six holes. Just rip it. Or yeah, tomorrow and yeah, probably tomorrow will be the golf day. Like I'm I'm heading home Wednesday, so yeah, I love it. As many as we can fit in. That sounds that's fun. awesome. Well, we've been talking about Neil Peart uh, and the fact that he passed away. Of course, so yeah. many people have been. Uh, I just wanted to get maybe uh, your reflections and maybe how. Uh, you know how much he might have influenced you, or or just any any of your thoughts on Neil. Well, I mean, as a Canadian first and foremost, and as a drummer, I, like yeah, I, the, the, anyone who's telling you he hasn't influenced you is lying. Like I, you know, it's, it's one of the greats, and it's such a shame when you lose one of the greats, as Jeremy can obviously tell you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, as far as influence, I mean, yeah. I don't think you can play drums in this in in this country, in Canada, and and you know not be mega aware of the impact he has, and just you know, I'm sure what, you what probably, a monster he was. You, like, pr- you probably crushed through a few uh, Rush jams, like playing along to their records. I know I did, even just as a bar in a sense, right? You got to learn a, a few tunes. Yeah, not not only in like the the cover days for me, but also just as like a, a student. You know, that's uh, that's what I'm saying. Like as a Canadian and a drummer, there's, it's inevitable. Absolutely. Were there certain things that he did when you'd listen? You'd say, "How the hell did he do that?" About ninety five percent of the catalog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's and that's what I mean. He was he was so unique. You know, like there was what a thumbprint, like finger mark. Um, fingerprint he had on on the instrument and then just like yeah there's there's no drummer and jeremy can obviously speak to this probably better than me but like there's no other drummer that really had a mark the way he did that i can think of no way not like that especially in the modern era like for so long from like 1980 to now where yeah right and, and he was like, I, I, I always remember he was the youngest guy to be, um, in, like, so Modern Drummer is a magazine that every kid drummer, like, is obsessed with, myself included. And, and he too. was, I remember when he was the earliest uh, inductee, like, the which Hall is of before Fame. my time even. Yeah, but, like, that's before my time. But, uh, like, I was well aware of that fact from as early as I started playing the instrument. I think he, yeah, he was an inducted in like 93 or something like that. I think it, I think it was way earlier. Oh, earlier mistaken, but Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think, I think like it was like 83? 80, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, like, like li- literally before I was born, he was in, in that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. There you go. That's the old like still active Hall of Famer kind of thing, you know, where it's oh, like, yeah, he's like, sitting, like, but we got to put him in anyway. Like LeBron like, or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. I was, I was probably mad that he was already in it. You know, like he was so young, and you're like, right. "What the? F-? Like he's so, so." Yeah, yeah. You, you can swear. Which, which by the way, you're, cl- you're clear. Oh yeah, okay, you, thank you, you. Can, yeah. Yeah. Cur- yeah, you caught that self uh, censorship. Yeah, yeah. No <laughs> so, worries. Let her rip. Did you guys see his drum set grow over time? Then I think it shrunk a little bit. Oh really? It used to be even bigger. Yeah, at one point he had to be put in oh, yeah, from yeah, the you're top. Saying that, but yeah. I, the last kit he could walk, there was a little space. <laughs> but I think it's because their electric <laughs> kit got smaller over time, just based on technology. So I think that yeah. was a big difference. Right. For sure. What were those like? Those uh, 
uh, shoot, what were the like the drums, the '80s triggers? If you ever see them, and you, and you still find them yeah. at like garage sales, the big they octagon were ones. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I should know what they are. They're Yamaha. What are they? But in, in any case, they were like. Were they so Simmons? Big. The Simmons pads? Yeah, yeah. that's it. Nice yeah. one. Yeah. But they were like how big that was, and now it's like you can, li- they're literally like up. Yeah. I don't know. And they were, it's they like were, everything like, gets They were like hard plastic. There was no like, oh, yeah, yeah this they, feels like hurt. a drum head. Right. Right. Every time you hit it, it hurt. It <laughs> yeah. was like hitting a it's Like, like Rubbermaid containers. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so he's like, I got to do big money. I got to hit the Simmons kit. I got to <laughs> rattle the bones a bit. Yeah. <laughs> right? It just spins Absolutely. around. And then Wait, po- talked about back problems for drummers. Yeah. Uh, makes sense now. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, absolutely. So, Tim, well, what are the chances that for your next record, you guys just go full prog in honor <laughs> of I'd, Neil? I'd go, probably more likely we go full Simmons. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, man, I, I, probably awesome. not that hot, but you know what? <laughs> not, not for lack of respect, I'll tell you that much. Mm-hmm. Well, listen, awesome. we uh, we will let you get back to the debauchery. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, like you, this is you don't want to you don't want to talk to me in Florida right now. I love it's it. Nine nine o'clock. It's <laughs> nice. You uh, know, yeah. The seniors have all gone to bed. <laughs> That's right. The roads are safe now. And now are you, the are blue you, hairs are asleep. Yeah, you're just, <laughs> me, you're and, just me and Gav at the pool. Yeah, you're just <laughs> slipping into things. Just <laughs> about to slip into things. <laughs> I would be lying if I told you differently. <laughs> I love it. Well, thanks for uh, taking a little time for us. And, yeah, and if people you. want to get a hold of you once again, it's Tim Oxford at Hotmail.com. <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> you son of a b- <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Uh, yeah. I, I, get asked, I get asked so many times in a year if that's really my email address. <laughs> Via my email address. Yeah, I just <laughs> love it. Real email. And any I, Russian brides yet? Email you? Yeah, yeah. Tulsi, that's that's your that's your problem. I'm that's asking. right. So no no new ones, nothing new. <laughs> Tulsi's fishing for leads, some yeah, yeah, yeah. fresh <laughs> leads. <laughs> okay, I guess they've all dried up. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You guys got to get a new campaign going here. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. really? We'll keep the old one going as long as we can. Uh, yeah. Enjoy Why Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, guys. I appreciate the call and and uh, anytime we can talk about. A fellow, uh, a, well, a drummer like Neil, I'm, I'm more than happy to take that call. It's amazing. Thanks, it's, bud. Uh, thanks, Tim. Really appreciate it. Hey, my pleasure. Here's Tim Oxford from our Kells. That was cool hearing him talk about it. I yeah. know. But again, across the board, yeah, that, uh, you're going to get that respect for Neil. Now, uh, we need to switch gears a little bit and talk about you and Jeremy, or you and Jonathan, and what you guys are doing. Um, This is huge. You got an album coming out. Yeah. And and I love the release date. 2020? Yeah, well, we're, uh, it's May 2-4. May 2-4. I love that that's the release date. And uh, yeah, our first single is out uh, on this Friday, the 17th of January. This is incredible. And like streaming services. Yeah, it's out. It's going to be on iTunes and we'll have a link up on our Twitter at Taggart in Live. I've I've had a sneak listen to this and it's, oh man. This is uh, it's, it's a video. What's the song called? It's called The Score. (laughs) The Score, okay. And it's, it's Gordon Lightfoot. Uh, kind of, you know, his manager, Bernie F- Bernie Fiedler, but we also like to m- merge him with Bernie Finkelstein because right. it's more funny this way. So this way he manages Bruce Coburn as well. <laughs> and Gord is always, you know, clamoring for Bernie's attention and chirping, you know, Bruce. And it's all fun loving because obviously this is not happening whatsoever. But or the song is basically Gord kind of going off on on Cobra. Bruce Cobra. <laughs> and the fact that he lives across the street from Drake. Drake. Yeah. Right. Drake got him, you know, produced the jam for him. So right. he's got a hip hop. Okay. And he just goes off. Okay. It's great. Spits some bars on Bruce. I love that. <laughs> some of them are like, you're the Bruce Peninsula. <laughs> <laughs> I love I can't wait. Right. The score drops this Friday. It's Dropping this Friday, Tiger and Torrens. Yeah. And then what is the album called, or can you reveal that? Well, uh, yeah, we're going to hold off okay. on the album. I love it. Because that. there's actually going to be another single in February 14th on uh, Valentine's Day Ooh. called Weekend Bumsies. Okay. With <laughs> Andrea from Cape Breton singing about, you know, going to the bar on a Saturday night. 
and just uh, bombing just a few darts. Yeah, <laughs> but it's uh, it's a great jam. That's more of a country song. Okay. So this is more of a the first song's more of a hip hop jam. Right. Second one's more of a country jam with pedal steel. Aaron, Aaron Goldstein. Oh, cool. Put Gar- Aaron Goldstein laid laid down some sweet pedal steel for us. And so is the whole album. Uh, Characters. Musical songs, or is there a little bit of banter? It's all character banter? characters okay. from the show had to come up with songs. So there's gotcha. like, uh, there's a Joe and Gino Vanelli song, right. <laughs> where basically they just get into a fight and right. the song ends in a fight. Right. There's a. Uh, there's an EDM track oh, yes. called Popu- Popular, Popular Girl by Commander Donnie, who's the strip club DJ from <laughs> Sherbrooke. <laughs> Where he has Madit baths upstairs. You got to send me that one. He's got Madit bathtubs. Like, go up for a Madit bath. Can you imagine? I love a good Madit. <laughs> you know, like a bath full of beer. Full of yes. Madit, specifically. <laughs> like 11% alcohol. Exactly. <laughs> So yeah, no, that it, it, we it, the record range is all over the place, yeah, and it's really fun. And we got to to to, to uh, get nuts for sure. Love nice. it. Yeah, nice. Looking forward to that, man. I can't wait. <laughs> and the new track this Friday. Yeah, and the then, score uh, will drop this Friday on all uh, platforms. And then you have a new Tiger and Tordens podcast episode, I believe, up to today. today. Right? Yes, yes, where we actually we do the scenario of how the, the single is being dropped by. Donovan, the British record producer, right. calling Bernie, saying that he wants to get Gord for this collab. <laughs> I love that word. Yeah. I so love it, the word collab. It's good stuff. It's fun. It's a good time. It's It's been fun, just the record, but it's also fun kind of twine, intertwining the story beside it and telling the, how the record's being finished and made. Shooting and, that video for the score. Shooting the video and, and uh, the actual... Release jam is called Terry's Got Wasted, and that's where Toolsy Toolsy's that. gonna be in that. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Where to, it's the guy that comes to the weekend barbecue and ruins everything. <laughs> yes. Getting too banged up. Hey, that's in my wheelhouse. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was gonna I was gonna come with a great um a great adventure I was going to have on Sunday, but I was too sick. I was going to go to the Toronto Franchise Show. I wanted to, I wanted to see the uh, slimiest franchises that were available. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so you go in there and they tell you, like, straight they go, oh, up. They pitch like, it, right? The, really? The, the greatest yeah, sales pitches so. on earth. Like, wiener shacks, probably everything. Really? Yeah, well, was, is I, there any good ones? Or they're I, all I, was too, to I, was, I was too sweaty. Couldn't he was, go. You sweating to the oh, oldies. Is there another one? I want to go. Let me know. I know. That sounds awesome. <laughs> it would have been great. You and I can go in on some creepy Wayne's, little... Wayne's wieners. <laughs> I think you guys could go in there and do a nice podcast episode just on the fly. The kebab guys. Oh, yeah. There's so many <laughs> greasy ones for sure. Speaking yeah, of yeah, kebab. yeah. You're going to make a lot of money off this franchise. Speaking of uh, franchises. Yep. <laughs> uh, the McDonald's franchise now sponsors our show. Yeah. And soon our podcast. We're very excited to have them on. But uh, gentleman sent me a tweet today. I just wanted to bring it up with you guys. His name's Ryan McDonald. And he said, He works for McDonald's and his name's McDonald? <laughs> no, he doesn't work for McDonald's. Oh. At least I don't think he does. It's D O N E L L. Oh, McDonald? Donald? Like Chris O'Donnell, but McDonald. That's right. And he sent a tweet that said, uh, Secret Life Hack for the Big Mac, and you guys might know this already, is the double cheeseburger, and then ask him to dress it like a Mac. Boom. Cheap and no middle bun, arguably better. Give it a whirl. I've never tried that. Secret menu so, styles? So double cheeseburger, but have them dress it like a Mac. So have them throw on the special sauce. Have them throw on, I guess, pickles, lettuce, cheese, like all the stuff that's mm-hmm. on a Big Mac, but just throw it on the double cheese and not throw the other stuff. So does the price double too? Well, this is the thing. He How said it was, a, it was a price hack because it's two thirty nine. but then oh, people... Because, yeah, the double cheeseburger is two bucks. It's less, like, but apparently they caught on because uh-huh. there was a long conversation over Twitter between people and they said, uh, yeah, because it said, heads up, they charge you for getting it like a Mac. comes out to be four bucks-ish. Oh, that's not bad. It's yeah, a happy medium. Yeah, yeah so I got still the, a little bit cheaper. I got the McDelivery um, on Saturday night. Oh, my God. 
David Hasselhoff styles. Oh, yeah. oh that Big <laughs> Remember Mac. Remember that? That Big Mac never stood a chance. Remember his daughter filming oh, yeah. him? He's all banged up with oh, the. Yeah. I should have filmed me crushing the burger. Oh, yeah. been just On the floor uh, of a Vegas Daddy, hotel. Daddy's got to stop. Give me another burger. I'm hungry. <laughs> that was pretty but dark. But these burgers are good, though. <laughs> but your life's a mess. <laughs> so. <laughs> And then she sent it out into the world. Yeah. He's laying down with his shirt off and jeans. How about our boy Tom Arnold last week? What did oh, he do? Boy. Uh oh, did he slip off the wagon? No, but I like I love Tom, but he he was being followed by his current wife who's divorcing him, and he had his son in the passenger seat and he was filming the whole thing. The wife was following him and he was putting it on Twitter. And he was, you know, he was saying, yeah, she's following us. She's following us. And I'm like, what are you <laughs> like, doing? And then like, did Instagram the live. Up? Hey, my wife's following us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, he was doing that. What's he just out there? He just want. it's like the Hasselhoff daughter. Like you're sending your problems out of the world to let the world judge them, I guess. I don't know. How like, about Antonio Brown's video today? Oh, yeah. Same thing. Yeah, exactly the same thing. With the, there's cops outside of the house yeah. or something. Yeah, His it, baby mama showed up. <clears throat> The right? kids had to get into a police car, and he's yelling at them. It was bad. Oh, jeez. This is the time where I point out that this is our 300th episode of the podcast. What? Yeah. yeah 300? How perfect it is that Are Jeremy's here. Are you serious? Here. It's so great that Jeremy's here for this. Wow. Yeah. Well, that is a special thing. <laughs> <laughs> now, i I got to remember who told us this. So they had to do the math of all the different they seasons. Did. Some, they a did a gentleman did chart. it. A gentleman did it. And I, don't I didn't realize we had done that many podcasts at Fox. Wow. Four years of pods so down wh- there. What do you guys call like this episode? This Would is, it be 300 or would it be the new number? This is, well, we this don't is, go by number yeah, as it weeks. Do yeah, we go by number stuff? Uh, no, we go by seasons, but I believe this is in total number 301. Oh, oh. last, so last week was up. Uh, oh, so I missed yeah. it. <laughs> we can pretend. <laughs> I totally missed it. It's like the beginning of the new era today. So the uh, listener was Glenn T. Moles. Oh, perfect. So thank I'm you, Glenn. So, I'm so glad you That's interesting. That you know, we're 201 episodes today. Oh, okay. So we're 100 behind, which is great. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had our 200th episode out in Halifax at the Mayflower, oh, nice. Mayflower Curling Club. Oh, so you made a big deal about yeah. it. We we just forgot. Well, I mean, it's if you don't <laughs> name, yeah, but you don't have the numbers the same, so yeah, it's no. not as big of a deal. Well, the other thing we did, oh, there's the voice. You guys have the great shows though now, the great live shows. See, yeah, since we've, yeah, I was last on. You. you guys have done shows now, and we they're have. wicked, and you and you're awesome, and they were a blast. They were really fun. I can't yeah. wait for us to do a little double doubles, a little T and T and J. Oh, that would be unreal. Absolutely, I. It's we should funny. do something, and maybe in this year, in the next, for sure. Yeah, it was. It was. Um a little taste of what your life must be like, just being on the road and stuff, going crazy. Good to like have the him Hugh there. Dillon of, of his generation. <laughs> sure. Just crack and heroin and... Waking up and being the first Zanax. guy at Denny's. Oh, yeah. Well, no. Well, he Eating was, it off. He was not. Stuff. Uh, no, we barely ate. It was ate. dark. We never ate on our tours. He's like oh. punching the front desk guy because he can't get an eight ball. That's exactly it. <laughs> you got it. What do you mean? Just <laughs> hard well, drugs. Stoff did spend the most time at the front desk because he checked in and checked out. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> I'm Just not- crushing meth in his room like <laughs> Agassi <right>. in 88. <laughs> Don't I have the U.S. Open tomorrow? <laughs> Who cares? I don't care, man. <laughs> this is where. This is the only place I need. I'm to be. banging Brooke Shields. <laughs> 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 well, we better go do the TV show, even though um, our uh, parents, uh, our parents are away. Oh yeah, yeah. so gone. Tim's it's, out. Oh, it's different. So it's now a different the whip show. comes out. No, you don't tell us what to do. It's totally the opposite. It's the opposite. Shirts off. People are like, oh, it's crushing pies over the Fridays. It's cash Fridays every time (laughs) Timo's gone. (laughs) Every time. It's like you can wear Moroccan shirts, just chilling. Yeah, it's like having a substitute teacher. Why do you guys have shakers on set tonight? Why not? (laughs) Just start doing shakers during the highlights. Why is Dan smoking crack on this? (laughs) 
Agassi. What's with all the hardcore drug references tonight? <laughs> exactly. Well, it's all about stuff on the road. It's like he's like watching it. <laughs> guys are doing bumps between se- segments. Oh, I'm about to take my last cold pill. Oh, there uh, it is. Oh, yeah. Those Why did you snort it? Take Crash a yellow killer fella. <laughs> take a yellow killer fella. I have to do something. I'll be right back. Okay, hang on. He's going to oh. fire out some Kermits. Yeah. Everybody has to do that sometimes. Well, thanks for coming on, Jeremy. You just had that without a drink. How do you do that? Saliva. I have saliva. That's a skill. What? That was a bit of a horse pill without saliva. That nah. is a pretty big pill. To Could it be the comeback kid, though, or is it going down? <laughs> no. It's I've, gone? I it always gone? got is extra saliva. There? Yep. Wow. I'm a big saliva guy. <laughs> big, yeah, right. You got a lot of spit going in there. <laughs> I guess so. How do you get spit if you don't have it? I think you you just sort of close your mouth for a bit. Yeah. And shut up, right? Yeah, you just kind of wait, swish things around in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe if you if you if you're worried your mouth is too dry, you should shut up, <laughs> <laughs> or close your mouth. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think good ways to get your mouth going. <laughs> Back in the broadcasting days, <laughs> Gord Miller sat me down and he said, "You know what." You need to get the cotton swab around the back of the teeth. Gord, Gord Miller wouldn't take the time to do that. I'm wondering if I got a dry mouth going <laughs> Well, listen, uh, this has been awesome having you on. Thanks. Here. I think, it's, I think I'm getting you, sick. <laughs> I, was I feel like that. I was okay at the beginning. Now I'm I like, know. I haven't been sick in three years. Now I'm getting sick. Well, I wanted to ask, let's go full circle. Why have I not gotten sick? Yeah, why are you getting sick? What's your, tell us I your do secret. breathing exercises every day. Really? Yeah. Like meditation? No, they're just like powerful, uh, uh, like breathing with my finger under my nose, like a all the way to the top, hold it in for six seconds, breathe out my mouth, wait, bring it up again. And you think I this do that has kept six you times? Healthy? It's an old Buddhist thing. Six times a day? No, I do that. I repeat that six times, and I, I'll do that once or twice a day, but I, I don't get sick. And I, there's a lot of other things that that. Uh, and you have, have kids, and they could be bringing all. They sorts bring it all the time. Right? I see sick come in the door all the time, and I just say, <laughs> "This hey, is man, the first thing, first bug me. I've had in." I'm telling 20 you, try years. this thing. I will. I will. It, it's a. It, I don't know if the uh, what they call it, but it's just. I read about it in like a Markham paper. Some some guy. Hey, you want to learn how to get healthy? It's free and it's easy. And he went through the whole step. <laughs> You were at the pac mall getting he just, some no, DVDs. He was so, I was reading it. He was so excited about it. And I'm like, I tried. I'm like, I feel great since I've been doing this. So. Wow. Okay. And it's an old. I so like you old. sniff your fingers I like times. stuff that's, ha- you know, like, like oh, it's been for, for thousands yeah, of years. Yeah, yeah. Old remedies. Big fan of that so stuff. Just <laughs> yeah, just let her rip. You have to have a clear nostril okay. there. You can't have a bump in then. Or <laughs> 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 a lot of cocaine <laughs> talk. <laughs> Just like not, I've never done cocaine in my life and never would, but I like to pretend <laughs> that you know just, what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, right, right. It's kind of fun to do It that. is. Uh, all right, well, listen. Anyway, yeah, try that breathing exercise. Six sniff times. your fingers <laughs> and get healthy. All the way once, hold it, breathe out. Six times. Hold it for six seconds, breathe out. Why does your, your finger mouth. have to be there? Because it has to be restricted. You're breathing. Oh. It's almost like your whole body goes balloons, b- like a balloon, and you just okay. kind of, you feel good. And is it you get just a that? Bit of a, you get a little bit of a lift. I wouldn't be lying if, I, if, 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 if sometimes I feel a little bit lightheaded. No, so maybe if I was in jail, I'd probably be doing that all day. <laughs> in Moscow. Because <laughs> if you do it, you know, uh, do it long enough. It, the you, finger sniffer. You might as well be on like some kind of hardcore drug because you get pretty out there. If you, Can you sniff someone else's finger? I'm sure you can. As long as it's right up to the nostril, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Right. Now, is it is it just the finger sniffing exercise, or is it more, is there more <laughs> after that? Just the six. Just that. Yeah. Six, yeah. six times. Yeah, yeah. Six seconds. Six times. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Try That's it. easy to remember. I I'm know. Gonna try it. I'm gonna. Try I haven't it. been sick in three years, man. I love this. And it's uh, there's all, lots of other benefits of just like getting your blood rushing, man. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna I'm going to. Film and I say film. I'm going to shoot on my iPhone. You're going to do it on your Instagram. No, I'm going to show Jeremy doing it as a demonstration. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. And then that yeah, way everybody it. can do it, <laughs> yeah. and including myself. And I'll keep the video for myself so yeah. I remember how I to do it. I love it. That's and then great. you can sell this program. <laughs> yeah, and I'll be like, well, some guy told me in the paper in Markham. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
<laughs> and he was I love like, Markham. He looked like he was rocking <laughs> in the picture, man. He's like all spry and like he hurt his knees and was like doing it. And he's like all set now. He's like, I, th- I don't want to jog because like <laughs> he doesn't want to hurt his knees. So he's doing this breathing. And he's like, his doctor's like, what the hell are you doing? He's like, I'm just doing it this. Works. Like, well, breathing, keep doing baby. it. It works. You know what? Toolsy and I could remind each other because we share an office. We could remind each other. Have you to done do it, it yet? Yeah. We, like we could do it. Yeah. You know, together. We, almost like a group exercise. Yeah. Tim could Tim could join us. Right? It's Tim kind of it, it's kind of like a meditation vibe. Right. Yeah. Interesting. It's good. <laughs> Tim. What do you think Tim's <laughs> That's doing? Tim breathing. That's <laughs> not. Yeah. Let yeah. me hear it again. <laughs> like is he asleep? That's his uh, voice Was he modulated. Sleeping? Oh, okay. <laughs> But what like if he was sleeping, he's definitely got. He has to wear one of those masks when he goes to yeah, sleep, right? right? Oh yeah. <laughs> like he's got apnea for sure, right? He's got apnea, right? How many people have those? Because I see but so is many. That the, the Darth the Vader? Vader? No, the. <laughs> The C- it's a Darth the C-pap. Vader mask, man. Yeah, the CPAP. I, I had a bus driver that had one once. I was like, what the. F- is that noise but what about coming from the bunk? And I look, and it's like... <laughs> <laughs> and I look, and he's got this huge, like... Looks like Pink Floyd freaking like, yeah. gas mask. <laughs> that's, that's all it is on CNN is CPAP cleaning machines. Right, because the seniors, right? They're yeah. watching. That Anderson is Cooper. apnea breathing for sure. I've never had to deal with anything like that. <laughs> okay, we got to get over to the TV side now. Word. Oh, shit, we're 10 o'clock. Right. We, got an interview. Oh. we have a 10 o'clock interview. Okay, okay, boys. All right. Thanks for uh, joining us, Jeremy. Love you guys. Love you too, buddy. And thanks for listening. Yeah. Goodbye.